I used to have a terrible fear of flying. Actually, it wasn't a fear of flying, it was a fear of falling, of crashing, of burning, of impacting. The flying part was okay. And all of this came from the fact that when I was 15 years old, I was dating a girl whose mother had a skydiving club. And she said to me, honey, do you want to go skydiving? And I said, sure, baby. I'm all man and afraid of nothing. This turned out not to be the case. So I go to the training, and we're, it's at Lake Elsinore, city of hate. And I go up in the plane, and I've got this bag that could have been filled with laundry on my back. And 8,000 feet, you're on a static line because they're afraid you're going to freeze and not pull the cord. I damn near pulled the cord in the plane. And I climb out, and I'm hanging on, and the guy says, let go. And I'm saying, Bismuth Sugar, are you crazy? I'm going to let go of a perfectly good plane. And he pushed. I go, whoa, and my heart stops. My esophagus and colon started before my heart did. And I lost my lunch, and I lost the previous night's dinner. The parachute did open. My heart started again. Uh, and for the person who asked me, did lunch fall at the same rate as you? The answer is, was Galileo right? No, I had a parachute. Lunch didn't have a parachute. So I landed, not covered with glory covered with lunch. Uh, this story did not have a happy ending. Well, I didn't get on a plane again for 30 years until I was engaged to the fair Helenkala, and she said, uh, I'm going to Europe on our honeymoon. If you'd like to join me in any sense of the word, you'll be getting on that plane. And I said, but honey, I'm scared, and if I act frightened, I'm afraid you'll think less of me. And she said, oh, I couldn't think less of you, sweetheart. <laughs> there were two ways of taking it. I decided to take it the best possible way, and uh, I got on the plane. Think about it. Uh, wasp is a ridiculous, redundant word. White Anglo-Saxon Protestant. Has anybody ever seen an Anglo-Saxon Protestant who wasn't white? Will somebody show me an Anglo-Saxon Protestant of color? Just one, just, they really should be called asps, but uh, that, that might not work. The old old is different from the new old. Uh, the old old people were taka old. They were bent, they walked like this, they didn't, they had gray hair, they spoke Yiddish, they had wrinkles, their knees didn't work, their hips didn't work. Today's old is very different. Today's old, you've had your hips done, you've had your knees done, you, you have, your hair is prematurely orange. And, uh, and, we've, and, it, it's, and you still speak Yiddish, but it's fair because the trade-off is Everything moves except your face. It's really good for playing cards because you don't have any tells at all. And I got beautiful teeth, but I can't show them to you because I can't move my lips and my eyes are really dry because I can't close them. And, and these people are into healthy living and natural living, and they're shooting themselves up with Botox. Do you not recognize the word tox is toxin? <laughs> and the word bow is not pretty, it's not B-A-U. It's bow as in botulism. They're shooting natural botulism into their faces. Old is a tough word, isn't it? I was just talking about that, and in religion we talk about well, Christians talk about the Old Testament. Jews never call the First Testament the Old Testament because old means 
It's old, it's tired, it's been replaced by the new improved testament. Well, I'm not making this up, but the word testament comes from the word testicles. Uh, which explains why there are two testaments to uh, the Western Bible and uh, why uh, clergy are educated in, uh, in seminaries. Uh, and, and Now, you know, you're, you're allowed to hiss at that, but everything I told you just now was absolutely both true and factual because it is disseminate, disseminate. It is spreading the seed, and it's spreading the seed of religion. So that was absolutely true, but it does foreclose a third testament. Uh, <laughs> for those who are waiting for Jesus to come back again, and they're all waiting, and every generation expects him to come back, we finally have an explanation. I'm not making this up. They've been doing excavation around Nazareth, and they found very little wood, very little evidence of wood, very little evidence that there had ever been wood, and they don't think he was a carpenter. And when they went back and looked at the Greek word, the Greek word was tekton, which is stone. And it turns out that most scholars now believe that Jesus was a contractor. People would come back from, uh, from Easter vacation. Somebody said, my mother got married over the break. She married Fred. Oh, Fred, you're gonna love him. He was our daddy last year. <laughs> and everybody would also come back with black eyes because they had had tragic deviated septums. And uh, <laughs> Mil Milton Burles, Milton Berle said, I cut off my nose to spite my race. And uh, so people would come back with noses that were fashion statements. Oh, you're wearing Fuchs. Uh, you've got Oppenheimer. Is that a Lipschitz you're wearing this season? Those were real names, by the way, and not a Jewish law firm. Pretty astonishing. And you had a choice. You would go to the doctor's office and there would be books. And with pictures, do you want a ski nose? Do you want a shiksa nose? Do you want a hook but a smaller hook? How is it that you want to remedy the hideous mistake that nature made? And so you would actually be called to literally go to the doctor and pick your nose and see what would fit on you. Death is kind of funny. We went searching for a plot. Um, we call it, yeah, the, the prices you could plots when you go out looking for the last real estate you need to purchase. And we went out, uh, Bobby and Perrine, uh, to get a plot. And we met the uh, mausoleum maven Mort, who was telling us, location, location, location. <laughs> this one has a nice view. It's got a view we're going to see from six feet under. Well, it's got a Wi-Fi and a camera. Uh, it's got a nice path. It's got a tree. God, that doesn't do me much good, but it'll be in the shade. I'm hoping, what, you're saying it's going to be hot where I'm going? What? Wow. So we're, we're, lo we're looking, and we want to be in the same, well, they're not cemeteries anymore, because that sounds so negative. They're memorial parks. So we want to be in the same memorial parks so the kids will have one stop grieving if they ever decide to visit us. Okay, they also have, it's not an eternal resting place. You could buy before it's ready. Uh, and, and, in the undeveloped area because it's gonna be cheaper. So I ask Mort, what, uh, what happens if I'm ready before it's ready? He said, well, we can put you in a temporary eternal resting place. We also bought Double Deep. So I ask Mort, well, what happens if I go first, which is the statistical way it happens, but I wanna be on top? Well, let's, uh, I should be on top at least once, you know, it's okay, you know. So he said, okay, we can take you out and put her in and then you can be on top, okay? And I said, okay, I don't want to bring this up, but you know, what happens if there's death and remarriage? Can you go three deep? At that point, he was treating me like I was a pervert and he stopped talking. He said, look, it's a very good area. Uh, 
They're, it's it's American Native in, Native American property next door. They'll never build a house, a casino maybe, but not a house. Uh, but we got to put it on our cards for miles, so we got miles to go before the big sleep and the dirt nap. <laughs>